Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim from Pitsco Education. And today I'd like to take a minute and talk to you about the Tetrix Prime Gripper Kit. We uh, have a lot of feedback from our customers and that's important for us. And one of the things that they, they wanted from us is a step-by-step -step video on how to put this gripper kit together. They love it, which is really good, we like that, but they needed just a little bit more help and able to um, allow them to build this a little bit easier instead of just following the printed instructions. We know everybody uh, learns and follows things a little bit differently, so for those that like videos rather than printed material, that's what we're gonna do. But before we do that, I wanna take a few minutes and actually talk about the Grouper Kit itself. Now, this is how it comes from uh, us in the factory. It does not come with the servo. You have to have a servo to put that with you, but everything else that you need to assemble the Grouper is in the kit. Now, what that looks like when you get finished is something like this, and I mounted it on a Tetrix Prime beam just so you'll see how that looks. Let's talk about some of the features of the gripper kit because uh, that's kind of important for you to know why you might want to use this in your robots. First is scale. It was made specifically and designed specifically to work with the Tetrix Prime system. You'll see that the holes make it easy to mount on the Prime elements. It mounts with uh, thumb screws and wing nuts. It makes a very secure mount. It's based on a, a parallelogram design, and what that really is talking about is the relationship in these jaws and these pivots. And as you see, on each side, there's a parallelogram created by these jaws and the building plate. And what that does is when I move those jaws in and out, just like that, you'll see that these gripping surfaces on the inside of our jaws stay parallel to each other. Now the advantage for that in a gripping mechanism is that if I had just a single pivot here and my arms were connected solidly out in each direction, as I bring those jaws together, if my jaws don't have a special indent, if they're straight, I can attempt as I bring those jaws in, it sometimes would tend to squeeze things out the end of the, of the gripper, which is not a good thing. But with a parallelogram like this, you, uh, you solve that issue because these jaws stay parallel and they're gonna come in at an equal pressure distance. So the same here as this end, all the way up and down. And it allows you to contact the object that you're gripping in a more secure manner and it's not gonna try and squirt or squeeze out the top. So that's a very important feature. Again, I mentioned it does require a standard servo to complete the kit. These jaws are reversible, uh, and I'll show you uh, what that looks like later on when we do the hands-on build, but basically that means that I can use them where I'm coming in from the outside, or I could reverse them and grip from the inside. If I had a hole, I could put them in and grip on the outside of the hole, inside of the wall of the holes. So that's what the gripper looks like. Now I'm gonna go ahead and we'll gather some things up. We'll come back, we'll put them together, we'll go over some troubleshooting tips as we go through it so you'll be able to use this on your robots as we go. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I've uh, gathered everything that I need, hopefully uh, in front of me. I've taken everything out of the package for the gripper kit and laid it all out here so that you can see it. And I'm gonna kind of go through what the contents are. Now, some of the things, the tool-wise, I might not use, but I've got them out here just in case because of troubleshooting things that we'll go through as we go on. But let me start with um, this card that comes in the gripper kit. This is very important because basically, this gives you exploded views and actual instructions on how to go ahead and this is gonna go together. You also can find these uh, more of a step-by-step -step format in the builder's guides that come with the sets. But if you need this with the kit, this is available for you. I'm not gonna follow along, but uh, it, it's available for you in the kit if you need it. So let's go through the items that, uh, that are come with the kit itself. Let me start with the gripper plate. This is the base that we use to mount the servo to that becomes the foundation for the gripper itself. We have gripper jaws, left and right, that actually are used to form the gripping motion. We have the gripper pivots that are side specific. We have a right side that will go onto the servo itself and then a left side that pivots off of that. So you need two of those. We have four of the pivot arms that are exactly the same, but as we put these together, you'll see the orientation that you need to use when you do that. The main thing to notice is that 
Um, there is a hole that kind of identifies one end from the other, so that's important. We've got four of those. We've got uh, 11 of the small Phillips head screws that are used to attach the, uh, the various components to the gripper plate. We have washers that go with those. We have four of the Phillips head screws that actually attach the servo to the gripper plate. We have our 322 HD servo that uh, is part of the uh, prime kit that you're gonna need for that. Uh, and then to help center that, I've got some things. I've got my prime uh, RC, my wireless receiver, a prime battery, and my tools. I have my two-in-one screwdriver that has a Phillips number one head on uh, one end and a flat blade on the other. Um, this Phillips number one head, it's important because if you have the wrong size, you can potentially strip out the Phillips head screws. So that's important. You don't have to use this exact uh, screwdriver, but the size of the head is important. So again, Phillips number one is what you need there. I've got a uh, Sharpie that I can, I'll show you how, what I'm going to use that for to mark my servo for centering. And then in case I've got some trouble uh, getting the, the plastic horn off my servo, I've got some tools that I can use for that. So that's kind of a breakdown of what we have. We have to start with our servo. It comes from the factory with this little white plastic servo horn. Now, we don't need that. We're going to take that off. But before we do, I want to show you uh, one of the troubleshooting tips that's important. We need to make sure that the servo is in the neutral position, the, the rotation part of it, before we mount this to the plate. To show you that, I'm going to take my Sharpie and I'm going to make a mark on the face of this horn so that you can actually see as, as an orientation what that uh, looks like. So um, basically what we want to make sure we have a range of motion that is, uh, is centered. So this is all the way to one side and this is all the way to the other side. Now, if I made my mark in the right place, when I have it straight up like that, it should be in the neutral position. Now we also could do that um, by attaching it to the prime battery and wireless receiver. So, if I go ahead and attach my battery to my wireless receiver, just like that, you'll know that I've got powered on with my flashing light. I'm gonna go ahead and attach my servo to one of the channels. It doesn't really matter which one, as long as we know that it's attached to one of the channels. And I'm gonna turn on my uh, gamepad, and you'll see that it went ahead and paired with my receiver. So this servo now is live. And if I move one of my joysticks, it's this one on this side, you'll see that my servo is head is rotating. Now I can trim that out so that if my trim knob is in the center, my little dial there, hopefully if my servo is in my neutral position, that line should be straight up and down. Now let me just show you how that looks like if I uh, move it. So I'm going to unplug here. I'm going to move this all the way to one side and I'm going to plug it back in. And because my gamepad is on, you'll see that when I plug that in and got power, it went to the neutral position. So that's a way you can always know if you don't, if you're not comfortable with manually uh, finding the center, if you use this, you'll, you'll go ahead and move your servo head to the center position. Once we've done that, we're ready to go ahead and proceed. So I'm going to unplug this. Unplug my battery, turn off my controller. I'm going to set those aside now so they're out of my way. And I'm going to add and remove that white plastic horn with my two in one screwdriver. Now, sometimes those come from the factory. That screw is pretty tight, and that's why this Phillips number one screwdriver is very important. Um, if you have the proper size Phillips head screwdriver, you won't strip that out. Now we need that uh, small screw so we don't uh, don't lose that. Put that down where you know where it's at. You can remove this white plastic horn and that is no longer needed so we can set that to the side. So we're gonna mount this on our gripper plate. Now you can see that the gripper plate has a hole on one side and on the back side it's got a standoff post. The servo is gonna go with the gear through that hole and we basically want that to be kind of centered up. You're gonna take the longer of the Phillips head screws, and I've got four places to go ahead and mount those in. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. One thing to remember, 
These are metal screws going into a plastic body, so you don't want to over tighten these. It's pretty easy, even uh, kids or students, uh, to get a little rambunctious and want to make things as tight as they can possibly be. And it's uh, you don't want to do that, though, and strip out the, the mount. So again, be careful when you do that. So you can see I've mounted all four of my Phillips head screws. My servo is mounted to my plate. And you can see that my little gear head is sticking out uh, in the center. Now, as long as I haven't moved that, I'm ready to go ahead and attach my, uh, my first gripper arm with the gear. And um, you'll look, there's difference uh, between the two gripper pieces, gripper arms. One has a boss on the back raised that's gonna attach to the servo. One does not. We want the one with the servo. I'm gonna hold this so I can see it and then I'm gonna turn around so you can see. You basically want that arm to be sticking straight up. Uh, and you'll feel that when you press that onto the servo horn, you'll feel those gears engage. And you wanna press that down until it's flat to the plate. And when I move that, uh, again, remembering that we want it to be straight up and down, you'll see that I have a range of motion that goes uh, from this uh, little post all the way over to that one. So that kind of gives you an idea that you've got it roughly in the right place. But again, we want to go ahead and make sure that we're started kind of in the center. Now we're ready to add the second arm. Now you see that it just has a hole that fits over a, a post on the this side of the gripper plate. We want those teeth to be engaged. And we want the arms to be roughly in the same position so that they're sticking uh, basically straight up and down. And when I rotate them together, they should meet in the middle. And they're not quite there. So I'm gonna move my teeth one tooth over. And get my engagement right there. Now, you can see that I'm having a little bit of a trouble getting those gears to mesh. And the reason that I am is because the servo is not quite centered in the hole. And that's why it's kind of important to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen those screws just a little bit. All four of them. It's gonna allow me to slide this over just a little bit in my plate. Snug that back down, two of them. And now when I try and put this plate, you see that it fits, meshes with the gear much better. So I want them to be in the center and then when I rotate them out, roughly in the same. So uh, I've got those in place. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put screws in both of those to make sure that they're attached firmly to the gripper. On the one that's going into the servo, I'm gonna use the black servo uh, screw that came with the servo. I'm gonna use one of the little washers, go together like that, and fasten that down. Take one of the small, shorter Phillips head screws to attach the other side. So I've got both of my center gripper jaws, uh, geared gripper jaw, uh, arms uh, attached. I'm ready to go ahead and uh, finish attaching the, the other four pivots. Now, um, they are identical. Uh, so it doesn't matter which one you pick up. That What matters though is how they're oriented onto the gripper plate. And you can see they've got a hole on one side of the arm that helps identify the direction. That hole is gonna go away from the gripper so if you'll see, it's gonna go just like that. All of them are gonna go in that same orientation with the hole outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my small Phillips head and attach that. You'll see that that rotates freely, that's fine. That's what we want that to do. And now I'm ready to attach one side of my jaws. Uh, again, they are going to go just like this. And you'll see that when I pivot that, I'm getting that parallel motion. Now this is the standard configuration of how we would mount the jaws if I want to come and squeeze 
and grip something from the outside. Now, if I wanted to grip something from the, an inside di diameter, I could just flip that arm around just like that, and then I could squeeze out against something to actually grip it. But again, um, that's an option. You could even change that up. You don't have to uh, attach it um, at the end if you needed to change at any point in time. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the standard configuration using the small Phillips and washers. I have the two jaws or the two arms attached on the front. I need to add one more on the back. You see now that I've actually got one side complete. Um, as you, I move that in and out, get this wire out of the way. So you can see, uh, now I'm ready to go ahead and do the exact same thing on this side over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach that arm. You see that I've got both of the jaws and the, uh, the uh, linkage arms connected. Now, if I've done this correctly, we can manually check and see if our, our gripper is aligned correctly by when I move the jaws in together like that, I should have them meeting in the same point in the middle and they should align vertically here. And then range of motion, I should be able to actually open all the way up to the edge of the jaws. Last thing we need to do is go ahead and connect it back up to our uh, wireless receiver and remote control and actually check the motion when it's under power. So I'm gonna do that right now. Bring back my battery and reset transmitter get that hooked up just like that flashing light I'm paired so now my gripper should be operational and if I move my gripper my uh, remote control I'm going to go ahead and get my gripping motion Again, I can adjust my trim so that if I need to, with just with my trim knob, I can change my default position on where those grippers go. And if I need it to be a little bit wider or I don't want it to close, or I don't want to hold the joystick down when I uh, close on something, I actually can adjust that with my trim knob on my gamepad. So that's uh, how you would assemble a complete gripper kit uh, from the Prime system. Uh, a couple things that I didn't mention that I want to kind of go over because I had um, them here on my mat. Um, I had a pair of pliers and uh, a pair of uh, wire cutters. What I use these for is in case I had trouble getting that white servo horn off the servo, I can use those to go ahead and actually cut or break that off. We don't need that as part of the servo after you've uh, actually taken it out of the package so we can, it doesn't hurt to destroy that. There's another video that I actually did to cover troubleshooting on getting that horn off, so I won't go into that there, but that's why we had those tools there. So I hope you found that uh, uh, information helpful and um, make it a little bit easier for you to go ahead and assemble your Prime grippers so that you can put them on your Prime robots and use them effectively. So like we always say, have fun, build some robots, come back and see us.